Previously on the bill. How many drinks did you have tonight? Two. Three. You shouldn't have even been in the car, let alone drive it. What you did was stupid and dangerous. You have to know when it's right to jump in and when to pull back. Three shots, TLA. Hit somebody. Where is he? He went that way. Go ahead, over. What was he wearing? Uh, Alright, I'm sure he's okay if he managed to get up and run away. Uh, she's a bit shaken up, her car's hit a pedestrian. Six eight six, I'm proud of injured man by the subway, over. Right, five, four, three, from six eight six, on my way. Got a name? No, no name. Alright, let's have a look. Oh. That's a homeless hostel, isn't it? Alright, here they come. I, I don't know where that blood's come from. I don't even know if it's his, yeah? Alright, mate, thanks. Why don't you get onto Stone and tell them we're going to go to his hostel, yeah? Sierra Oscar 30 from 686. A man hit by the car on Faith Road to Camberton Hall. We're going to get over there now and find an ID on him. Over. 13? That's Jimmy Chadwick. What's happened? He was knocked down by a car this morning. Is he okay? He's at St Hughes, so we don't know yet. Can I ask you a few questions about Jimmy? I don't know much, but yeah. Do you know if he's had any problems with anyone recently? I thought he was run over. What, the driver did it on purpose? No, it was nothing like that. When we found him, he was covered in blood, but not his own. Well, I've caught him with a few bits and bobs that I can't imagine he paid for, but that's about it. He's not much trouble. He's one of, actually one of the sweet ones. Has he got any mates around we can talk to? Uh, he's been looking out for a young lad, Adam. Is Adam about? No, no. The two of them left together about an hour and a half ago. Any idea where they were heading? Oh, no idea. They don't tend to know themselves. Right, I'll call it into Stone. I'll do a check on Jimmy. Well, I'd better go and see him. Right, we'll see you down there. Where had you been before you were knocked down? I was on the pavement. I was... Before that? What have you been up to, Jimmy? Well, I don't think. Uh, not much, you know. Like checking for coins and vending machines, ticket machines, you know, the usual. So were you alone? Uh, yeah. So you've been alone all morning? Yeah. Rebecca says she saw you leave the hostel with Adam Villiers. Uh, yeah. But, like, he wanted to get a drink, you know. Well, I don't touch the stuff till after ten, you know. Don't want it to become a problem. So between leaving Adam and getting knocked down, did you see anyone? I saw loads of people. You know what I mean, Jimmy? Did you meet anyone? Did you speak with anyone? No. Your coat was covered in blood and it wasn't yours. Blood? Yes, Jimmy, blood. You were covered in it. I cut myself the other day. It was fresh blood, Jimmy. What a mystery. I reckon Jimmy got hit by the car running away from her and we were just battling. Maybe. Mickey, I've got a mysterious one for you. Go on. Like this guy gets hit by a car, runs away, and then we find him covered in someone else's blood. What's he saying? Nothing. Doesn't even know where the blood came from. So you've no idea whose blood it actually is? No, not yet. So you're a victim then, surely? Well, there will be. I mean, it must be. He's covered in someone else's blood. OK, listen, I'll tell you what. Why don't you get back to us when you've actually got a crime for us to investigate? <laughs> yes. Sarge. <laughs> I give them something to investigate. Wipe a smile off their smug little stuck-up patronised... Sarge. You found out where the blood came from? No, but it obviously isn't important enough for CID to be worrying themselves over. You took it to CID? Yeah. A bit premature. Well, we're just going to go along to IBO now to see whether any uh, incidents have been reported close by to where Jimmy was knocked down. Well, keep me updated. Sarge. What's the matter with you? Doesn't like me. I blame him. Face. Is that why you were trying so hard then, is it? I wasn't trying hard. <laughs> After you. Listen, mate, we do me a favour. Run for a check, see if any incidents come up in the area where Jimmy was found, yeah? Jack, this is already on the way to the Thank you. See Oscar 543. We're at Bugs Road. It's a lot. Well, stay with us. It's better. 
full of junk in here. I think we could be wasting our time. Come on, Will, just keep looking. Come on, let's get out of here, eh? Wait, come and look at this. What is it? Looks like fresh blood. Look. There's a trail of it here. Yeah. Will! Still got a pulse. Sir Oscar 543. Ambulance required. Disused warehouse on Bud Road. It looks like he's been shot. A male has been shot. I repeat, a male has been shot. <laughs> Cam Burton Hall. That's the same place as Jimmy, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, mate, just stay with us, yeah? Right, PC's Fletcher and Armstrong found a young man whose identity is as yet unknown down at the abandoned warehouse on Bud's Road. He'd been shot once through the left-hand side of the chest. He had a key ring on him from Cam Burton Hall, the homeless hostel. Wasn't the fellow who got run over earlier from Cam Burton Hall? What's this? Will and Sally dealt with an RTC earlier this morning. The pedestrian who was hit was covered in blood that weren't his own. Have Socko arrived yet? And cordoned off the area. Right, can you get someone down at this hostel to check out these two men? Go. Right, now, there isn't much in the way of CCTV footage in front of the warehouse, but there might be some more down on Bud's Road, so could you two check that out? Max, can you take care of the search for the gun? No problem. Stuart, can you talk to the RTC victim and see if the blood that was found on him is a match for the gun shot victim? Can do, God, yes. Can't wait to see DS turn his face when we get back. What now? You tell me it was at number 22, could you? 22? It's Adam Villiers. What's happened? I'm afraid he's been shot. It was in quite a bad way. Was it his blood on Jimmy? We don't know that. Do you know if there were any problems between the two of them at all? No, no, like I said earlier, Jimmy's been looking out for Adam. It can't be... I mean, he's a bit rough around the edges, Jimmy, but he wouldn't... Oh, God, Adam. Could we have a look through Adam's things? It might give us a clue who did this to him. Yeah, they're not supposed to smoke in here. What's this? His driving licence says Adam Younger. I thought his name was Billiers. Well, they rarely use their real names. It's a birth certificate. This says Adam Villiers. Maybe he is using his real name. I swear. I walked out of the hostel at what? I reckon. 8, 8.30, and that's the last I saw of him. Well, you know we'll be able to see if the blood in your coat matches Adam's, so I hope you're telling me everything. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, this is going to sound bad, but I promise it's the God's honest truth. The blood, yeah, well, it was Adam's. I've got nothing to do with no shooting. I wouldn't. He's a mate. It was like that when I found him. When you found him? Yeah, well, we arranged to meet there. I have a couple of smokes, like a tinny or two. When I got there, like, there he was, like, on the floor, like, bleeding everywhere. Like, I didn't know what to do. Found an ambulance? Oh, yes, yeah, silly me. I should have got me mobile out. No, no like, I tried. I really did. I've never seen so much juice all over the place. Like, I really did. I tried. But it just kept, you know, like, like pumping out. So why didn't you get some help? I did. That's what I was doing when I got flattened by that car. Listen, if Adam's such a good mate of yours, why'd you wait so long to tell me this? By the time I was like, you know, over the shock and like, with it, I thought it'd be probably too late. Besides, you lot were trying to pin it on me. I swear, I've never held a gun in my life, let alone shot one. CCTV footage. We're gonna have a fun day. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. Well, let's see if there's any sign of that kid who was shot for CID. Sir? So what have you got? Well, apart from the fact he's using two identities, not much. He's only been at the hostel for a week and a half. Anyway. Stuart. Yeah. Well, we'll have to wait and hear from forensics about the gun residue. Right. Well, Jimmy admits that the blood found in his coat belongs to Adam, but he claims that he found him shot and he was trying to help him. The victim matches a Miss Poe we've got from Adam Younger. Went missing in Guildford three months ago. His parents are on the way to St. Hughes now. Right, head over there. They might know who's behind it. Sir. 
Hi. Hi. Adam's parents are here. They've come to ID their son. All right. I'll leave them to you then. This way, please. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Younger? Yeah. We need you to identify the boy we believe is your son, okay? Oh, it's him. Yeah. It's oh, no. okay, love. It's okay. Mr. Younger, oh, no. I know that this is a very worrying time for you, but if we could have a quick oh. word, we need to find out some more details about your son. It's okay, love. You stay with Adam. Oh, God. Yeah. We can go somewhere a bit more private if you prefer. Oh, this is fine. Can you think of anyone that might have wanted to do this to your son? Um, we haven't seen him for over uh, uh, three months. I've got no idea what he's been up to, who he's been hanging around with. And did he have any problems before he ran away? We don't know. We didn't think so. He'd split up with his girlfriend about a month before he went. He didn't seem too cut up about it. He'd already started talking about another girl, Marissa. So we th Excuse me. Sorry. Thought he'd moved on. Had his ex-girlfriend heard from him at all? No. Uh, no one has. He's been using another identity. We found a birth certificate in his bag under the name of Adam Villiers. Does that name mean anything to you? We didn't know. He didn't know. What? We adopted Adam. Villiers is the name of his birth mother. I mean, we were going to tell him. He didn't know he was adopted. No, it's his birthday in a couple of months. We were going to tell him. He had the birth certificate. He had a photocopy of it. Look, I've got to tell Lisa. Dr. George, please go to the This is found in Adam's jacket. Thank you. What is it? It's a note from Adam's biological mum, Mary Villiers. He was going to see her this morning. Hey. Hey. Enjoy with that CCTV. Roger and Tony are trawling through it, nothing so far. I mean, they've seen Jimmy running down Arbor Drive, but then again, that's nothing I didn't already know. We've got forensics back on Jimmy Chadwick's clothing, the gun residue found there. Any sign of the weapon? Right, well, uniform have been trawling the scene between where Adam was shot and where Jimmy was found. Nothing. Yes. Hello. That was the name? Okay. What time is that? All right, all right, thanks, mate. Okay, so, PC Flesh just found a note on Adam. It's from his birth mother, and Mary Villiers. Now, he's supposed to meet her this morning at 9 o'clock at the town hall, so I need you two to find out whether that meeting happened. Touch. Oh, also, on that letter, he mentioned a grant adoption agency down in Croydon, so if all this is legit, the details will be on that. I think it might be a good idea to have a word with Mary Villiers, don't you? Touch. Mrs Villiers? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm not normally in my dressing gown in the middle of the day. I got a week off work this week, so I'm normally up and out by seven. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed, to be honest with you. No, I don't be. When it's my day off, I don't get up till countdown. Not been out at all this morning. Yeah. What do you think? You're not supposed to be meeting anyone. No? Well, it's just that we've seen a letter written by you to your son Adam arranging to meet today at 9am. No, tomorrow. Well, the letter had today's day on it. Oh, no. Don't tell me I put the date on that. No. No, I don't think I would have done that because today is my grand's birthday. I remember thinking that when I wrote the letter. Does anyone else know about the meeting? Only my son, Chris. Can we have a word with him? He's out. He did post the letter to inform me, but... Can anyone else account for you being here all morning? Why? What's happened? I'm afraid Adam's been injured. He's in intensive care at St Hughes. Take a seat. Chris. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, stop! Stop! You! Stop! 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 I want to speak to her. I didn't do it. All right, calm down. She's here, OK? Someone will come and get you as soon as it's possible for you to see Chris. I don't understand what he's done. He wouldn't do anything that bad. Please, can I just have a word with him? Five minutes. I know I can find out what happened. As soon as he's been processed through custody, 
Now I understand you said you're happy to be his appropriate adult in the interview. Can I ask you something? When Chris found out he was off to see Adam, how did he take it? No, I should never have agreed to it. Of course it was going to hurt him. Looks like they've got a suspect. Mary's other son, Chris, showed up at her place covered in blood. Well, come on, he wasn't exactly covered in blood, was he? Not that you'd be interested even if he was, Sarge. Uh, sorry, Sal. What you have in the usual? Um... Yeah. What's the matter, Sarge? You in a rush? Well, I do have an interview to do. Oh, anything exciting? Listen, I'm really sorry for coming to you earlier with that non-case and all that. Mm, yeah, me too. I'm wasting your time like that when you're obviously very busy. Yeah. Your coffee's ready. Thanks, Sal. I'm gonna notice that, not being a detective and all that. Comedian. So, Chris, on your mother's letter to Adam, why did you change the date? I didn't want Mum getting ill again. You don't know, it could have gone wrong and then you'd be bad again. I suffer from depression. I told you I'm okay now. You can't make decisions like that for me. It's just trying to do the right thing. I'm sorry. But I, I promise you I didn't shoot him. I wouldn't do that. I, I don't have a gun. I don't know how one works. You've got to believe me. Okay, try and calm down. Just tell us where you went and what you did when you left the house this morning. I went to the town hall. Saw this guy hanging around all nervous, so I thought it had to be him. And I told him that Mum didn't want to see him. Says that she didn't want nothing to do with him. And then what? I told him to stay away and not to try and contact her. He went a bit mental. He told me to get lost. I could tell he wasn't taking me seriously, so... I followed him, I waited till no one was around, and then I grabbed him. <laughs> he wasn't listening to me, so I had to make him listen. Okay, so how did you make him listen? I punched him. I punched him to the ground, and then I, I pinned him there, and I told him that I'd kill him if I ever saw him again. I didn't mean it. I would never kill him. I never even punched no one before the day. It's okay. What happened next? I just walked off. I mean, he didn't try anything. I think he was pretty shook up. Well, I went to Sherlock Park. I sat there for ages and then went home. Okay, who can anyone confirm that you were there? I don't think so. Hey, how'd you get on with Chris? Yeah, well, he seemed pretty genuine to me. No, yeah, no, although he has got a strong motive and no alibi for the time the shooting took place. He did admit to beating Adam up, though. Yeah, what's this? A shot of Adam on the old Bagford Road, handing over a briefcase to some bloke. What time was that? Just before 10 o'clock this morning, after his fight with Chris at the town hall. I feel like I gave Adam an envelope, it's probably got some money in it. I wonder what he's got himself mixed up in. Well, we need to talk to Adam, don't we? Yeah, well, until we can do that, can you find out who this guy is? Sure. Sergeant Stone, can you get someone to check the CCTV and the witnesses around Sherland Park? Now, Chris said that he was there sometime between about half ten and quarter to three. Sure. Sarge? Chris and Hughes on the phone. Adam's awake. Can talk now, yeah? Isn't this a bit soon? He's only just regained consciousness. Dad, can you go and check how Mum's doing with the coffees, please? I'm fine. Dad. Okay, okay. Ten minutes. This is your dad. He's worried about you. He's not even my real dad. Yeah, we know. We also know that you've been in contact with your biological mum. Guys, I didn't mean to cause any trouble, really. She's my mum too. All I wanted to do was to see her. Look, we've spoken to Chris Villiers and he's admitted to the assault. That's good. But he said he didn't shoot you. No, no, he, did. no he, he didn't shoot me. Just did this. Who did shoot you? Jimmy, he said that I could earn a couple hundred quid if I just did him a favour. He said that he needed some briefcase returning to some bloke. So, after the fight with Chris, I went to meet Jimmy and he gave me the briefcase and I went to the burger van and I did the deal. But I was meant to meet Jimmy and in the warehouse on Bud's Road, and when I got there, there 
There was no sign of him. And then, bang, he shot me. Who shot you? The, the guy who I handed the briefcase over to. He, he, he followed me. When you were brought in here, you didn't have the money on you. Do you know what happened to it? No, he, he took it. The guy who shot me, he, he took it. He... And you have no idea who he is? Look, I've told you. Ask Jimmy, really. He's the one you, you should be speaking to. It's his fault I got shot. You can release Chris. Park Warden's given him an alibi for the time of the shooting. Yeah, Adam's just told us he's not responsible. It was the guy he handed the briefcase over to. Who's he? Yeah, he says he doesn't know who he is or what was in the briefcase. Jimmy Chadwick put him up to it, apparently. He was going to get a cut of the money the man was handing over. Will and Sally are still at St Hughes, aren't they? Yeah. Ask him to speak to Jimmy. So I've been thinking. Mm. A grand. It's not exactly big time, is it? It doesn't shout drugs, so if it's not drugs, then what is it? I mean, I suppose it could be dodgy gear, but... Well, it's not going to fit in the case. Mind you, it could be information on where the dodgy gear is. I don't know. I just spoke to Will. Yeah? Jimmy's discharged himself. He's gone walkabout. Right. We need to find him. Let's try Canvas and Hall. I thought Jimmy was still at St Hughes. He was. Oh, I haven't seen him since this morning. And when he left the hostel this morning, do you remember if he had anything on him? Anything suspicious? Slightly different about his behaviour recently? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, he did ask to use the photocopy a couple of days ago. I suppose that was a bit unusual. What did he copy? No idea, he wouldn't let me near it. Can you uh, show us through to his room, please? Mm. Rather oh. you than me. Very nice. Got some more of those? No. Oh, well, better get stuck in then. Only joking. Funny. He's not as tough as he likes to think he is. Well, it must have been very difficult for him finding out about Adam. I don't think now's a good time to rock any boats. I don't think I can meet up with Adam for a while. Not right now. It's not fair on Chris. I need to make him my priority. Once we're back on track, I'll be in touch again. Can you do something for me? Can you tell Adam? Please. I don't want to upset Chris anymore. I'll tell him not right now, but soon, I promise. No, love. All right, can we get some fish and chips and go home? I'll show you out. Oh. You all right? Yeah, I thought I was going to be sick. Hello. Aha, photocopy. Simon Lingford. An address, what is this? That's a hit. A hit? I put money on it. There's a time, a place, a description. Seriously, it's a hit. I've seen this sort of thing before. And it looks like Simon Lingford doesn't want to be at the S2 bar at half past five this afternoon. Hang on a minute, there's something written on the back. Burger van, Old Bagford Road, 10.30. Isn't that the time that Adam gave the guy the briefcase? Yeah. Well, that's not very professional. Hitmen don't normally give out phone numbers. Well, maybe it's Jimmy's. Yeah, well, I doubt we get a direct line to the Hitman, but I get someone to check it out. Definitely. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 5. Go ahead. Yeah, I need a TIU check on 0771 486 486. Gets the results sent over to DC Moss, over. We need to get over to the S2 bar. We need to get this Simon bloke safe ASAP. Outside. Well, there is it. Friend getting shot, knocked over by a car. Now this. Do you fancy telling me what's going on? I'm at the foggy. 
The guy's a nutter. DIU have said that the phone number scored on the back of the hit details belonged to a Derek Clark, who also happens to be the guy that we saw handing the briefcase over to Adam at the burger van. Stuart's got some details off crimin. Derek has got a bit of previous. Yeah, ABH, GBH, and he's a dangerous guy with a violent past. Although the fact that we managed to trace him through a phone number suggests he's not a professional hitman. Also, he lost the briefcase with all the details of the hit in it. It's just sloppy. Any history with guns? Well, not himself, but some of his associates have. Whoever ordered the hit clearly isn't on top of the game either, otherwise they would have got a guy with more experience to carry it out. It all just seems a bit messy and disorganised. So where are you at with Simon? Have you any idea who'd want him dead? No, but we think Jimmy might. When we got to the bar, Simon was shouting, Tell me... Tell me what you know? Yeah. Has Simon got four? Well, the criminal uh, check dropped a blank, Gov, but I've been checking his uh, bank statements, his financial records, just to see if there's any criminal activity in or around his, his businesses. But at the moment, he just seems like a run-of-the-mill guy who runs a bar. Nothing to suggest that you'd want to put a hit out on him. We've got anything else on Derek Clark? Yeah, we've got an address and a vehicle registration number. Can you get somebody over there and circulate these car details? Also, we need confirmation from Adam that Derek was the guy that shot him. Yeah, I'll get a couple of uniform on it. All units are red BMW, registration November 367, Romeo Whiskey November, believed to be involved in a shooting. If seen, do not stop without ARV support. So, you recognise this man? You sure? This isn't about the fight, is it? What do you think it's about? You know, don't you? I know what? About the hit. Jimmy told you. This will make you in some sort of trouble. And what is it? Women? Work? What's behind all this? I wish I knew. It'd be so much easier if I did. I must have some idea. A few. But I'm not sure. A few. So you're saying that there's more than one person out there who wants you dead? Yeah. What have you done? Well, nothing. Just the normal stuff, you know. I've, I've overspent a bit. Got myself into a bit of bother over a few loans. The kind of people I should have run a mile from. So stupid. Well, you must have some idea to go this far. That's why I want to find out from that blood-sucking scum. Who's this, Jimmy? Yeah. Come into the bar. Never seen him before in my life. Said he'd only tell me the details if I gave him 1,200 quid. <laughs> it's starting to make sense now. Yeah, we're going to need a list of all the people that you owe money to. If someone's angry enough to order a hit on me, you lot knocking on their doors is hardly going to help. No, mate, it's the only way we can help. No, I, I'm not giving you anything. And anyway, I don't know. I don't know who... It is. So, why was he shouting, tell me what you know? Shall I tell you why? Okay. Because you had information about a hit that was about to be put on him. How did you find out about it? Okay. Recognise this man. Because he was the man that you sent your mate Adam to meet at 10.30 this morning. No. We've already spoken to Adam, so I wouldn't bother trying. He told us about the briefcase. He told us that you told Adam to give it to this man at the burger van on the old Bagford Road. Told us that this man shot him. Okay, I'm now showing the suspect, Jimmy Chadwick, exhibit MC1. Now, this was found in your room, Camberton Hall, in your handwriting, Burger Van, Old Bagford Street, 10.30. Exactly the same time that you sent your mate out on his little errand. You know, if you don't want to talk to us, we can arrest you on conspiracy to commit murder. You could be looking at life. Come on, Jimmy. The evidence is stacking up. We just need you to fill in the details. OK, OK. But none of this is my fault, OK? You just like, got unlucky. No, oh, I'd say Adam was the one who got unlucky. I found the briefcase, OK? Not found so much as you... Look, this has got nothing to do with me, OK? You nicked the briefcase. Well, I was presented with an opportunity to take it. He didn't double lock his front door. Well, what's the idiot doing, leaving a case like that lying around anyway? You know, he's asking for it. Where was this? Um, Maydell Street. Not oh, short number. 20 summit. 23. Even I wouldn't be that stupid. Right. For the benefit of the tape, DC Webb, leaving the room. I thought these guys were meant to be all savvy and like, you know, streetwise. There it was, a gun, and the details were a hit. Talk about a gift. I'm a smart thinker, I can't help it. I just saw another opportunity. I wasn't harming no one, right? You know, I just wanted to make a bit of wongas. So I put a note through the geezer's door. Miss geezer. The bloke whose house had nicked it from the owner of the case. Derek. Told him 
It's a ring, mate. I gave him the number of the call box on Swallow Road. I didn't think he would. I thought he'd stay well away. But, yeah, played right into my hands. I told him to meet me at the burger van. That I'd return it. No questions asked. In exchange for a crown. Hmm. What did this bloke on the phone say? Oh, not much. He hung up on me at first. Then he soon changed the tune when I dialed 1471 and called him back again. Seemed like I'd do anything to get it back. Like, agreed to everything. No fuss. I probably could have asked for some more cash, come to think of it. Okay. You know anything else about this guy apart from his address and his phone number? No. Don't even know what he looks like. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I do now, but... Thank you. Right, Derek Clark's profile suggests that he's violent, but he's not a pro. He failed to kill Adam, so he's obviously not an experienced gunman. However, we've got four armed officers outside this address that Jimmy gave us. But Clark's inexperience suggests that he's going to try and make this hit. Right, we know that he doesn't have a job, so it stands to reason that he's going to be desperate for some cash. Now, we're taking a calculated risk that he doesn't know that Adam's still alive, but even so, we'll need some uniform down at St. Hughes just in case. Sonny, Will, get a full statement from Adam when you're down there. Are we going to use Simon, make it look kosher? No, it's too risky. And to protect the public, I want some bodies in the bar. Now, it's due to happen at 5.30, so I want you all in plain clothes and full body armour. And I want another four armed officers. Stuart. Right, the hits used to take place at 5.30. This is when Simon normally takes his break. Now, his evening staff arrive then. He takes the opportunity to go outside, have a fag, place a few bets. Normally stands out the front of the bar here. The bar's not overlooked by any high buildings, so the hitman has to get in pretty close. Now, Max has agreed to stand in for Simon. He's approximately the same age, colour and build. He'll come outside the bar at 5.30 and he'll leave the door open. Um, Mickey, Stevie, I need you in a car on Sangbourne Road with a visual on the front of the bar. Sergeant Stone, I need you with PC Stamp and Valentine inside the bar with four armed officers. Now, myself and DCI Meadows will be with the CO19 advisor in IBO. We'll have visuals on both the front and the back entrances of the bar. And from there, we can control the show. OK, let's go. All units from Sierra Oscar 55. Decoy now on the spot. From Sierra Oscar 6, I've got eyeball gun. From my experience with hitmen... Oh, <laughs> from my experience, when I was undercover... All right, I... shut up, you might learn something. <laughs> As I was saying... In my experience, the moment there's even a sniff that someone's onto the hit, it's off. I mean, they're careful. They have to be, don't they? Mm. So, you're going to pass Mary's message on to Adam, then, yeah? Just got to find the right moment. No, if you were real, do you know? Forget it. You're better at all this stuff than me, anyway. What are you two doing back here? We've just come to take a full statement from Adam. Yeah, then we're going to stick around if it's OK. Until we find out who shot Adam, we need to be as careful as we can. But it's nothing to worry about. We're not that bad, are we, mate? Is there something you're not telling me? No, no, it's just belts and braces, that's all. Still no sign of a suspect at the bar. Did you get my last message? Over. No, repeat. We're just getting a statement from Adam. We'll stay put until we get the all clear from you. No, it's not him. I'm police. Quick work, this way. What's this? I'll explain. This way. Come on. I haven't done anything. This way. Which have happened about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, but at this rate, we're all a nice lump of overtime. <laughs> so, you happy now? Huh? Well, Sergeant Stone wanted an update off you, not me. Maybe I should start some paranoid whinging about how he doesn't like me, yeah? Please. Come on, you know I like it harder than that. Oh, you're unstoppable. Right, I'm going to go outside and see if I can get a bit of reception on the radio. Yeah, you do that. This guy, however, he's a novice. That's just it. I mean, a novice would be shaken up after shooting Adam. He'd, he'd be lying low, do the proper hit another day. Maybe he's flat. I mean, that's why I was surprised he wasn't. And the only reason he wouldn't be at his flat would be because he's worried. Worried that the police are on to him. I'm gonna give you your arrest. And the only reason the police would be on to him would be because someone's grasped. Hmm. 
I suppose the only person who knows who he is, who, who could positively ID him, is Adam. 686 received. Sierra Oscar from 686, the car belonging to the suspect in the shooting is parked in the St. Hughes car park. I think Adam's the target. How you doing? All right, nice one, Sal. Yeah, yeah. We need CO19, eh? Yeah, she was brilliant. No, she wasn't. She was reckless. She disobeyed an order to wait for armed backup. Yeah. And from what I've heard, you put the safety of yourself, more importantly, the public, at risk. But there wasn't any time. Sally, there were armed officers right behind you. Sarge, I'd better go check on Adam. Listen, there's a pint with your name written all over it in an hour and ten minutes, yeah? Sarge, that was one of the bravest things I've seen someone do. Yeah, she's got real guts. She just needs to learn to rein it in. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know how to say thank you enough. It's, just... it's no problem at all, honestly. Thank you oh, very much. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm better than I would have been if you hadn't turned up. Adam, I, I had a chat with Mary earlier. I'm afraid I'm not the bearer of good news. She said she's very worried about her son, Chris. And, well, basically, she needs a bit of time before you arrange to meet again. She wants to. She just... Needs to give it a little while. I, I don't mind. Tell her that's fine. Whenever she's ready, I guess. There's no rush. I'm, I'm gonna go home. Okay. <laughs> So when you were arrested, you had a gun on you. There's a kid lying in hospital who ID'd you as the bloke who shot him, and your mobile phone number is on a photocopy with details of the hit on it. So in short, mate, your defence is looking pretty weak. Sylvie. Is that what you're going to say, Sylvie? Pretty much, yeah. You know, I looked over your form. This is a lot more serious than you just swinging your fists about. Desperate times and all that. Desperate enough for you to shoot someone for a bit of cash? I've done a bit of this work in the past, you know. A kick in here and a kick in there. If anything, this is a bit easier. They'll get punched in the face. Where'd you take your orders from, mate? You know, you don't start talking to us, you're gonna carry the can for this yourself. I don't know. Like, put a gun to my head, you're getting nothing from me. I really don't know. You're telling us you don't know who asked you to kill someone, you expect us to buy that? It was all done on the quiet. No names, no questions. The less I know, the better. Well, come on, you must have been approached by someone. You must have spoken to someone, right? Got a call from this bloke. Said he'd heard from someone I was looking for some cash. I was. Told me where to pick up the case and that all the details would be in it. What about payment? Got half the cash up front in the case. The other half when I finished the job. In an envelope, the same place I picked up the case. Wave goodbye to that now. Still got the number? Told me to throw my mobile out, destroy the evidence. Did you? What about this bloke's voice? Yeah. You recognise it? Someone you had a favour to? Nope. Don't know him. 
I asked him who'd given him my name, but wouldn't tell me. This lad you shot, how do you know he didn't die, eh? I went to an internet calf. Victim of shooting fights for life. Good news travels fast. Why'd you shoot him in the first place? It wasn't even a target. He knew about the job and he was trying to blackmail me. He wasn't. Come on, he's just some innocent teenager. Didn't even know what was in the case. He was doing a favour for his mates. Not my fault. They weren't to know. People should learn to keep their noses out of other people's business. I just wanted my money back. You know, if we find out you're covering for... I him... don't have a clue who wanted this Simon bloke dead. Don't know who he is or who he's upset. I'm not going to be any help to you, am I? Well? Well, Derek doesn't have a clue who ordered the hit and he doesn't give a damn about it either. Derek's second payment ain't gonna happen, so the chance of picking someone else up's gone out the window. Whoever ordered the hit knows that Derek's failed. So I think bother with Simon while we're still sniffing about. Yeah, well, maybe it buys Simon the chance to find some cash. Keep the sharks at bay. Yeah, hope so, for his sake. Where is he now? Enjoying the safety of his cell. I'll go and tell him he's got to get out. Are you sure you can't let me stay here a bit longer? Sorry, mate. We have caught the guy that was hired to kill him. Yeah, but someone still wants to be dead. Is there any way you can try and clear these debts? Oh, I'll sell everything I've got, if I have to, including a kidney or two. I'm not messing around anymore. Yeah, be more careful who you do business with in the future. Wish me luck. Well, we'll keep an eye on your home and your bar over the next couple of days, but you've got any concerns, you give me a call straight away. wasn't your average day's work, was it? Nick and a hitman. No, Derek. Derek and a hitman. You'd think it'd be someone a bit more dynamic, wouldn't it? More like Will, you mean, yeah? Nah, more like Callum. Really? Are you still up for that drink? Yeah, lovely. You coming, Sarge? No, no, I've got other plans. I'll see you tomorrow. See yourself. Thank you. For what? Inviting the man who has a bitch about for the next two hours. Really? He said he was impressed with you today. You heard him, he made him to me. No, after you left. He said he really rates you, we all do. Really? As far as size it's going, he's not too bad. I'm not so sure. Come on, we're gonna have a drink. Next time on oh. the bill. What's your problem? It's proximity to death, bro. That's my problem. Sarge, look, the dress is ripped. Sally, call an ambulance. Don't tell me you haven't been there. Been accused of rape. A 16-year-old girl. No. You took advantage of her, that's abuse. Now we have to prove it.